yo, yo, yo. You already know who it is, man. It's Baby Gas. And Mrs. Trap Hours. And this is the Saying What You Want podcast. We back. I wish we had a little boom, 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 boom. I know. That would have been a nice sound effect. It definitely, it's definitely been some time. Uh, we appreciate the patience. Uh, man, I guess this uh, internal podcast right here, we're going to talk today about where we've been, mm-hmm. what we've been doing. First and foremost, though, we just want to say thank you to everybody that's been patient with us. We want to say thank you to everybody who actually been tapping in with us when the podcast is going to come back. Yes, thank you for bugging us because <laughs> it lit some fire under our ass. Yeah, you guys are the reason that we even do all of this, so we're we're grateful for y'all. Um, but, you know, if you want to get a little into of where we've been at, why we stopped for a little bit, and what's going on, and I'll feed off of you. Okay. Well, for one, as you guys know, we did get married. So that took a lot of time from us. We'll talk about that in a bit. I don't, yeah. I don't think everybody knows. I know some people follow us on Instagram. Some people don't. Um, but we'll definitely get into that. Okay, go ahead. And a lot of things with the kids, sports. We've been busy. Yeah, we've definitely been busy. We've been dealing with, uh, and before I get into that, man, today's episode, I'm going to go ahead and say um, it is sponsored by Paletas. As you guys see, we're smoking on some Paletas right now. Um, <clears throat> so we just wanted to, you know, come back on here for one because we had a great content going. We had a lot of dope, um, a lot of dope uh, people as guests on there. And we just got caught up, you know, for one, for the people that know is I'm an artist first, you know what I mean? So a lot of people were asking for new music material. I think we were getting real deep into the trap. I was familiar. We were getting Mm -hmm. deep into the uh, podcast and people were wondering like, yo, it's been a year, almost two years when you're going to give us a new album. So we had to kind of take a step back to deliver that, which we did. You know, I think it's been like trying to find that balance. With everything that we're doing, the podcast, the trap hours, familiar, the music. It's like, I don't think we've found the rhythm to do like all of them. We kind of like step back from one to do others. Well, I would say it's mostly you that we have the problem with. How is it mostly me? Well, because, you know, one day you wake up, you feel good. The next day you got diarrhea. The diarrhea? Next, I'm just saying, like... Really, dude, that's you, because you're always on the toilet. No, uh, I'm I'm on the toilet like a regular person should be. You, wow. Okay, first of all, Kanye, I, it say? is not because of me what, and what no Kanye diarrhea. What say? Like I don't K- care what he said. Don't be K- talking Kardashian. about having diarrhea. You're like K- Kardashian. I'm not Kim K. You're like K. Kardashian on a fucking toilet more than a regular person should No, be. I am not. You need to go to the doctor. No, you need to go to the doctor. <laughs> but anyways, though... I think that, yeah, she right, though. The whole balance thing is uh, is definitely hard. It's definitely hard when you re- live in real life, things like that, you know. But back to what I was saying before she really interrupted me was uh, Quarter Soups and Sugar Water 2 is out now. That is the project that people were asking for. I got back in the studio. I delivered it. Great project. Real excited to share with everybody. I've been super excited to share all these videos that we've been shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, we... We also been working on the sports, like she said. You know, some of our kids are getting older, especially our boys. And, uh, you know, they've been wanting to play, like, football, soccer, all the things like that. So, lately, we've been on the whole football hype. You know, our oldest has been playing junior varsity. So, we've been kind of going back and forth with that. You know, that takes everyday practice, you know, things of that sort. Um, and just being invested in our family, you know, without having to get this distracted or sidetracked or however you would say it. But... I don't know. I think that, uh, you know, we're back now because we're just going to wing the shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that the whole, like, we drop every Wednesday, we film at night on Mondays, you know, that. Our lives are not set up that way. <laughs> not at all. So I think that uh, for the people that are listening and the people that are viewing, we apologize for the delay, but we are back. We just want to get a little into it about how everything been, man. We just got married, like she said. Um, and somebody forgot to wear their ring today. What are you talking about? My ring's Oh, right no. Here. You have it on now, but I'm, you didn't have it on earlier because you forgot it. No, thank you. We've had, I've had it on all day. So I'm not sure who you looking at. Wrong nigga. You know what I mean? No, definitely not. Wrong nigga. I just didn't get to record you because by the time we got home, you ran upstairs and grabbed it. 
I don't recall none of that. He but. forgot it, but Anyways, moving on. Back to what we were saying, though, the wedding. Let's talk a little bit about the wedding. How was your wedding, babe? It was beautiful. Talk to us about it. Everything about it was just everything that I've ever wanted, down to my bouquet, down to our kids, how they were dressed. Um, I mean, oh, my God, and the vows. So we wrote our own vows, and they got, they were deep. And I was definitely trying my hardest not to cry during the ceremony. (laughs) That was like, so I'm looking back at our pictures and some of the video footage, and my face just looks like, you could tell I'm, like, focused on something. I wasn't, yeah. like, I thought I was super smiley, but then when I looked back, I'm like, oh, dang, I must have been trying real hard not to cry. Yeah, if you could show us in a quick expression what your face might have looked like, what would it be? Um, Maybe like this. Like what? Like nah, just it was a more, regular it was, face. It was more like a... What? <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. Why'd you pucker your lips like that? Because that's how you were. You really, you were like trying to kiss me, hoping to kiss me sometime soon so it could be all over, but at the same time not trying to cry. Yeah, that was, yeah, I tried really hard. Because <laughs> I, w- I, I kept thinking of like my pictures too. Like if I cry, my makeup was about to be fucked up. I mean, you know, I think that uh, what was super dope about our our wedding was the fact that, uh, for one, I didn't even, see, let's just take a step back real quick. We have no examples in our family as far as wedding and marriages go. Right. So when it came to us getting married, I feel like it was really, we were winging it. We were YouTube and shit. We were Googling shit. I for we, sure was YouTubing like We didn't vows. know what the fuck to do. People, like, when they told me vows, like, I didn't even know what the fuck that was. I had to Google and YouTube a few different vows to get an understanding of what it was. I didn't know that you could, you know, uh, write your own shit. I didn't even know that it was something that other people sometimes write for you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was just a lot of that. So I think that having no example, having no actual lead, um, you know, I think that, you know, we did our shit, you know, and it, and the whole wedding was really like us. Yeah. Right. It was nothing that somebody else would want. And I think that's what was dope. Right. We had a great, great, um, uh, venue, uh, estate, shout out to La Grande Estates, you know, um, for hosting our wedding. Um, uh, the staff over there is just amazing. You know, they helped us from, like, point A to point Z as far as, like, the venue goes, the designing, making sure everything. that every, everything How went smooth. How you want smooth. your table set up. Yes, everything. And I think that, like, back to what you were saying was the bouquet, right? You know, all those type of things. I remember that when we first was planning the wedding, we was going through everybody that the wedding organizer was recommending, right? Mm-hmm. Which, they were good people. Yes, I won't they were. say. I won't say. But, um... One thing that I've noticed is that, you know, certain demographics, certain areas, they try to, like, get over on you for shit that you could get for way less yes. and probably a way better job, you know, somewhere else, which is kind of the situation with the bouquet. I think the first time that, you know, we reached out for a bouquet, they was charging us, like, one price, and then the person we ended up going to, which was a Mexican-owned you know, florist uh, shop was, uh, you know, probably like 15, 20% of the price that the other person had gave us. Mm -hmm. And it came out dope as fuck. It was beautiful. You know what I mean? So I think that, you know, for the people out there that are planning weddings, that's about to get married, that's thinking about getting married, just do what fits you. Like, you know what I mean? I think that's what was cool about our wedding, that it fit us. Mm -hmm. People knew that we wasn't doing shit out of the ordinary. I mean, down to the, to the, um, invitations yes you know i think it like really resembled us rather than like going the route that your family would like what what the friends and family would like you know i think it was us down to the music i mean it was dope like she said the vows were tight as fuck we're working on actually getting that edited and possibly you know publicizing that on uh, youtube or something yeah uh, for the people to watch um you know besides that the food Oh, the food so was good. fire. Like we had a uh, 
We actually flew in my godmother in from uh, Parral, Chihuahua, Mexico. And she came down and she made some fire-ass birria. She had the rice and beans. We had empanadas. Mm -hmm. um, we had ceviche. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, I, I feel like it was dope. You know, I've been to some weddings where they try to be like super elegant with it and end up serving some nasty ass food not only that but small portions we like to eat yeah we was definitely uh with the seconds you know yeah I mean? <laughs> they every, definitely went for seconds you was not at a diet you was not in a diet if you came to our wedding no um and then just the people too it was uh i considered it a small wedding mm -hmm. you know other people were when i told them to like guess the amount they were like damn like, that's a little bit, uh, that's a good uh, chunky amount, you know what I mean? Yeah, I thought ours was small, too. Yeah, and it was. It, to me, it was. It, I would say it was about 85 to 90 people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our circles are really small. You know, we associate ourselves with a lot of people. We do business with a lot of people. We got friendships with a lot of people. But when it comes to, like, actually being there, watching us grow, being a part of our journey as a couple and things like that, um, our people are limited. So, I mean. Especially you know. to share a moment like that you know what i mean that's something that i definitely wanted for our close friends and family and like you said that have like watched us on our journey yeah i think that was dope for me because uh we were comfortable you know what i mean it wasn't like those weddings where you have like families or just parties in general where you have family you ain't seen in years and everybody's waiting to get kind of tipsy to kind of start feeling themselves and mm -hmm. let them loose yeah. I think our shit was just instantly, these are all my partners out here, uh, our closest friends, closest family members, uh, and it instantly went from the ceremony to the reception, that cocktail hour. You know, El Jefe Tequila took over the bar. Yes, and everybody <laughs> loved it. <laughs> and, and what, <laughs> because this is why I wanted to do this one right internally, because I felt like there was a lot of story time in here. Yeah. Right? So... What was our secret code for people to get? See, because at our bar, we, 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 <laughs> we served mixed drinks, mm -hmm. right? We served beer, wine, champagne. Uh, but to get, like, pure alcohol, no chaser, no nothing, what was the uh, secret code for that? Double horny. <laughs> <laughs> and there's double, a story behind that. Double horny. All right, so let, let, let's take a step back onto how the double horny. Because all night people were like, yo, two double hornies. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. like, let me get three double hornies. Um, and I don't think people even realized that it was just supposed to be a code word for you to be able to get tequila. It wasn't literally that we were calling the drink double horny. Yeah. But anyway, so let's take it step back to like two weeks prior to the wedding or a week prior to the wedding, I think. Um, it, it was our bachelor and bachelorette parties. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, like, we were all like, iffy about if we wanted to do it or not. I was unaware that the best man and the bride of honor or whatever, you know. Maid of honor. Oh, yeah. My <laughs> maid of honor had to do all this. Like, my, my nigga calls me, you know what I mean? Uh, my nigga calls me. He's all like, yo. Um, what you doing on this date? You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to see what's up with this bachelor party and all that. And then, like, I remember getting off the phone, and I'm, I forgot where I was at, you know, but had a couple, like, older women around there that's already married. So I started talking about, like, man, why this nigga hitting me up asking me about my bachelor party? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And somebody was like, that's your best man's job. Like, your best man's supposed to put together your bachelor party. And I'm like, What? So at that point, I had to just let it be. You know what I mean? My best man told me, yo, this is the date that we're doing it. The girls are doing it the same day. We, let You know, just be ready. I didn't know what to be prepared for. I didn't know what was coming up. I didn't even know who was involved. <laughs> so, you know, we go our own separate ways. I think, where where, where did you guys go? Uh, we went to Jamestown, and it was at a, like, winery. So it was like a whole property, beautiful house. They had wine tasting like downstairs. It was like set up. So it's like um, like a downstairs basement type of thing. It's like connected to the, the winery's house. downstairs. Yeah. Right? Okay. It was mine was lit. I just made sure like I know I'm not supposed to know what you guys are doing for me, but no male strippers, please. I did not want that. So let me tell you. My in my head. 
I wanted no strippers at all. You know, um, I think that I wanted to do something along the lines. In my head, I thought, let's do something that we typically don't do. Mm-hmm. I feel like bachelor parties or bachelorette parties that have strippers are for people that don't normally go to strip clubs. You know what I mean? We fuck with strippers on a daily basis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like any day of the week, we could be at a strip club or just kicking it with strippers somewhere privately and they probably give us a show, private show, whatever it is. Strippers is just like a normal thing in my life. So I honestly thought like, you know what, strippers, you know, like not really my first choice. Um, you know, but like I said, this was my best man's job. He was doing his thing, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to just let it be. So we did that, you know what I mean? So let me tell you where we ended up, right? So my bachelor party, I ended up going back home, and I ended up having it in the Bay Area, you know? So we started off with, like, you know, we took a trip to, like, Frisco, us, all our partners and shit like that, all our day ones that was included, and we went to Frisco, you know, we, we basically, like, La Way took it back to, like, our teenage years. Like, the shit that we would do and the places we would go to have fun our teenage years. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, from there, we go to have dinner. Um, you know, we go eat at this fire-ass Brazilian restaurant and shit like that. Um, which, by the way, you know, that's another story within itself. Like, <laughs> the fucking food was fire as fuck, but all my niggas was just shitting. <laughs> they was like, we was all, I mean, me too, but I felt like me, I went to the bathroom like one time just on some normal shit. You know, uh, we had a couple, we had a couple people tap out for the rest of the night. That's how much the food had fucked them up. Like, it was bad. I'm not Damn. sure, I'm not sure what was happening because, you know, when I went to the bathroom, you know, some niggas was going through it in the stalls next to me too. So it might have just been something in the meat that day. You know how it's, Damn. you know, the meat's funny. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, you know, after the whole eating and stuff like that, you know, we uh, we continue our night. We're drinking. We obviously off El Jefe and, you know, um, you know, we're all like, oh, we go to a hookah lounge. Uh, you know, we go to a hookah lounge in Frisco, 724. Shout out 724. You know what I mean? We go to 724. You know, they pull out some hookahs on us. You know, and then I'm looking across the room, and I see my best man. You know what I mean? Um, I'm looking at my best man, and he's looking at me, and he's like, you ready? And I'm like, for what? Like, You know what I mean? And he's all like, I got some fucking molly. What? And I'm like, what? Hell no, bro. Like, it's been a cool little minute since I did the molly. You know, and he's all like, nah, like, come on, bro. This your bachelor party. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we got to do our thing. Now, let me tell you, I'm at the point in my life where I, I that's just too much for me because I know what it's going to consist of, like, a whole fucking night, right? So, you know, he pushing me, pushing me, and a part of me told me, like, you know what? This your best man, bro. He your best man for a reason. He choosing this for a reason. You know what I mean? Like, just go with it. So I'm like, fuck Surrender. it. Surrender. I surrendered. You know, we were back in fucking teenage year days, and the nigga fucking bop pulled out a molly, you know, and I was like, fuck it. So, you know, I popped this molly, bruh, and while we in the fucking hookah lounge, you know, we smoking on the hookah, like, the shit start hitting. So we're like, oh, I'm like, oh, shit. I thought it was going to, like, you know, you know the shit that be roaming around nowadays, you know what I mean? It's a lightweight funny. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a risk to yeah. even have fun nowadays. Um, but we, shit, I guess it was a reliable source, right? So I was feeling myself. We was having hella fun. We was all feeling ourselves and shit. And, you know, the night, you know, the night is, uh, starting to really come probably around like midnight, 1 a.m. You know, freaks come out at night. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So we end up going to, uh, you know, we end up going to a, uh, a, um, little like after hours joint, you know what I mean? For the people that don't know, it's like a strip club that's open after hours. So we go to uh after hours joint. I won't say where, but we will go to this little after hours joint. They drag me there. They're like, yeah, we about to get a room, about to have some stripper bitches there. You know what I mean? They're about to just have fun. You feel me? So I'm like, all right, cool. So we do that. We go to a after hours. We get a room. We grab a bottle. You know what I mean? Um, And uh, 
we basically, you know, for the people that don't, ain't never been to it after hours, you know, I'll, I'll paint the picture for you. It's basically like more of a private room for you and your people that you read now. And then these dancers, they kind of go like room to room. They rotate, come through, show with love, whatever. Um, well, when we got there, I feel like we got there at the time that they were like the most desperate. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not desperate. Yeah, let me tell you why. Because the moment that we walked in, you know, I like I lived in the like I lived down south and shit before. You feel me? So the strip clubs are lightweight different. You know what I mean? It's like boss bitches. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Bad bitches get their own money, all the shit. You know what I mean? And this one to me was more like, you know, we had a we had a. Uh, Damn, these flies are attacking me. Oh yeah, that's what it is when we outside. Look, so, you know, I had this one female. She came up to us like. You know, telling us, like, don't leave, don't leave. Like, asking us to not leave when we had just got there. You feel me? So I, I already have found it, like, kind of, like, weird. Like, what the fuck going on right here, right? Well, I feel like, you know, some, like, real desperateness over here. So, anyways, let me fast forward to what has happened. You know, so we inside this after hours, bro, and we must have caught these dancers at the end of their fucking shift because, let me tell you, the dancers was slow, the shit was awkward, you know what I mean? And my best man, you know, he trying to make this bitch live. Like, he really <laughs> trying to go in. You know, he got the bottles. You know, he got the he got the weed getting rolled up. You know, there's about four or five different girls in the room. Now, we all, at some point, we're like, fuck it, right? We let ourselves go. We enjoy ourselves. Like, we're here. It is what it is. It's 3 a.m. now. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just go. So, we all get in a lab dance, all the shit, right? So, you know, keep in mind that you know, I got a boy next to one of my boys next to me. You know, he getting a lap dance, and then the music cuts off, right? There's not a DJ. You control your own music in there. Okay. So the music cuts off, and all we hear is, like, you're double horny. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bitch, what? <laughs> I would have been turned off. So, you know, I wasn't. I think I was more like weirded out on the phrase, like you're double horny. You know what I mean? Like, I look to my left to look at my boy, and he look at me like, what the fuck's wrong with her? You feel me? Like, what? Oh, no. And then me, and I, me, and, me and the rest of my boys that's in there, we just rolling. Like, we knew it was going to be a phrase that stuck with us. Because the whole time, you know, he's all confused, too. Like, what the bitch mean, bro? Like, what's what's double horny? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that mean. I don't, what what you think double horny means? Like, you're horny, but really, really horny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what okay. I get okay. from it. Like, double horny. Yeah, because but... to me, it was like, shit, double horny. You know, shout out to the folks, too, man. Made us these trap hour. I know, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it says Trap Hours, and our names are actually on the back of the cups. Yeah, that's pretty dope. But back to the double horny, yeah, it was just a... And and keep in mind, you know, she was using, like, an Asian accent when she said it. Uh Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And we later found out the rest of the... Like, later on that night that she... Like, later on that night that she don't even talk like that. So it was was just extra funny. Uh, So when, when the wedding came... We were just so, like, it was so funny. And see, it was so funny that, from my understanding, what happens at the bachelor or bachelorette party, supposed to stay at that bachelor and bachelorette party. Right. Well, this shit was so funny that we had to share it. <laughs> you know what I mean? We had to share with everybody, like, nah, what the fuck is double horny? So, you know, when the wedding organizer asked us, like, what y'all want y'all word to be? I was like, you know what, double horny. And, and she didn't even flinch. She was like, who? So when we told all our friends and shit, all fucking night, that's all I heard at the bar. Double horny. Double horny. It was supposed to be like two, three people or something that had the and code word. And hella people got the code word. And everybody that was whispering to each other, like, just go to the bar and say double horny. They already know what you're talking about. But, you know, for the whole wedding, though, like, what do you think What, what do you think was the best part to you for the, from, from the wedding? Uh, the best part for me, I think, I mean... I really enjoyed our ceremony. I really enjoyed our vows to each other. That was something that I actually really enjoyed. I was nervous because I don't like the focus being on me and 
people staring at me for a long period of time. But once I got up there, I kind of just zoned into you. So that felt a lot better. And and just to give a, like a good description to the people, you know, I walked down to Tim's Higher is the song name by Tim's, the live version. Mm-hmm. So that shit was fire in the back. It was. You know I mean, it was definitely fire in the back. Um, you know, then you came out to uh, Mama Saturn mm-hmm. by Tanneriel. And uh, we had like some jazz playing before that while people were getting seated. And then when we walked off after we officially got married, we walked off to what, that Jagged Edge? Yeah, yeah we the walked, remix. Yeah, the So So Death remix. Yeah. So it was it was tight. I feel you on that one. I definitely liked the, the ceremony, too. I think that uh, the ceremony was the most meaningful, obviously the most meaningful thing of the whole day. Mm-hmm. Right? We put a lot of thought into it, a lot of emotion into the songs we chose. Um, And I think that we, you know, the ceremony was basically like the opening to the rest of the day because we were able to like really dig deep, not into only to each other, but to the guests. Yeah. And I feel like the guests were like, I had so many people coming up to me like, bro, I ain't cried in a while or bro, that was powerful or bro, that was super dope. Um, Or man, the, the words you guys chose to spoke. Somebody even told us, like, you guys had everything out there. You guys had umbrella fans, but nobody handed no handkerchiefs. So, <laughs> you know, I think that, that that was just more like, you know, to show that our friends and family that love is real. Yeah. And not necessarily just on some, like, lust shit, you feel me, on in the having fun. But, like, it, like when you find your partner, you find, like, your best friend, like, that shit is real for real. You know what I mean? So I think that the way that we spoke, it wasn't none of that cheesy shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it was, it was just really real, hard spoken. And keep in mind, no, obviously, I didn't know what her vows were. She didn't know what my vows were. Um, and uh, what do you think about my vows? Oh, uh, fuck! You killed me on that shit. <laughs> I like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, look, I, I really, I felt good about my vows. I still feel good about my vows. But I think that it's also what's expected from me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when you came out with your response, because our officiant made me go first, you know what I mean? When you came out with your response, and because the way you make it sound too, like, damn, I got to, damn, I might have to remind my shit. I bet you probably went crazy. Like, you made it seem like you was about to come with some garbage and nah. Dang, Garbage. Yeah, well, I mean, I said you made it seem like, oh, you know, like, you know, you made it seem like you was about to come out with some garbage the way you was talking. I would never like. come out with no garbage, though. But, yeah, now nah, you did that. I ain't gonna lie, you did that. I've had plenty of conversations after our wedding with plenty of people, and people said the same thing, like, y'all gotta publish those vows. You know what I mean? Like, that was that was hard. That was tough. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think that it was, it was dope because it, it also dug a little bit into your creativity. So mm-hmm. not only were you out, up there in front of hella people, but you were up there showcasing your creativeness. You know what I mean? So that was actually yeah. pretty dope. Um, what you think about my vows, though? They hit. I, like, almost broke at the end. Like, right before I had to say mine, I had to, like, turn my head for a minute and catch myself just because everything you were saying in yours was just you described our journey. And it really, it, it really hit for me. It was almost like replaying how we started and then up until that moment where we were at. With the music playing in the background, everything set in the mood, kind of like a movie, like, wait, uh, yeah. Where the music for in the real. background kind of like sets the tone. Like a pe- the music comes out first, people are like, oh, like this, that shit. Mm-hmm. And then all this real shit is happening all at the same time. It just made everybody like, yeah. And it was it was it was also dope. I think my favorite part of the ceremony would probably have to be when we uh you know, we basically got married as one with all our kids included. Oh yeah, that was so, beautiful. So I think that was tight. Even our kids got emotional. Uh both of our boys 
got emotional. Yeah, yeah. Two out, two out of the three. Youngest, he don't give a damn. He like, what the fuck going on? <laughs> yeah, he's just but, like, okay. You know, but uh, yeah, the two oldest boys for sure, they definitely got emotional. Um, I think they really felt like what was happening. You know what I mean? Um, and keep in mind for the people that has seen us, but or the people that don't really know, like we're a blended family. So, you know, even though like we consider ourselves one, you know, I just want to mention this just to give you guys a quick background of how our family works. Obviously, we're a blended family. You know, she came with two kids, a girl and a boy when we first met. And I came with two boys and we had a daughter together. You know what I mean? So it's been about six years now. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, just the reality of the situation was that before I came in the picture, before she came in the picture, um, you know, her oldest, her oldest probably experienced, you know, um, a lot with her, you know, went through a lot with you right. during your times. And okay. the same thing was with me, with my oldest was he also saw like me go through a lot. And he understood a lot that was happening when it was happening. You know what I mean? So I think that when we finally got together and, you know, we've, you know, we've been around each other for six, seven years now. And, you know, like, uh, like I said, in public to anybody else, you know, these are my kids. No, it ain't, it, this ain't like a step family. This is like our family. Right. Um, but in their journey, they also know where they came from. They know they got another parent in the picture. Um, and they know that we just both happen to be that one parent that happened to go through a lot of shit. So, you know, when, um, you know, when our oldest, uh, Angelo, mm -hmm. you know, he was, you know, he kind of got teary eyed because I'm sure he understood as the oldest like, this is real. Yeah. You know, I got a family. I got a full family. You know what I mean? We all come. It's 2022. We all come from some type of broken home. You Shit, know I'm mean? getting teary-eyed thinking about it right now just because, you know, I seen a meme, and it was like, nobody goes through it with you like your firstborn, right? No, nobody. And when I seen him crying, you know, that really hit for me because, like, you know, we've been through a lot. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely, and, and and it's it's good that um, our kids understand that too. You know, because even my my son, my son is you know um, uh, slightly younger by a few years, like four years, and I didn't really think that he was gonna comprehend too much of what was happening, but I really underestimated him on that sense because when he was crying too, you know, along the same lines was, you know, somebody asked him like, "Why are you crying?" And his response was like, I'm just hella proud of my dad. You know what I mean? So it's it's it's, it's definitely like, um, how would I say, like, coming from where I come from, my mom was a single mother growing up. You know, she had her fair share of, like, you know, uh, my little brother's dad was around for X amount of years. So we had a little, I had a little bit of father figure there. Um, but then after that, it was just real off and on, you know what I mean? And even though we, like, try to, like, tell ourselves over the time, like, we good, we good. Mom's probably telling herself, like, I'm good. I'm an independent woman, yeah. you know, whatever it be. But, you know, it's just something about having that full sealed castle. Mm -hmm. King, queen, prince, princesses, princes, you know what I mean? Like, things like that. So I think that what that did right there just, like, made everybody realize, like, we're one. You know yeah. what I mean? And it was, you know, us as adults, obviously we've already thought like that. That's how we move. That's how we treat one another. But I think as kids, it's now like, yeah, you know, it got real. It got real fast. Um, and I think that that was the dopest, that was the dopest shit of the whole ceremony to me. Because yeah. it was like, you know, because we, we had them sitting in the front, right? Because mm -hmm. we chose to sit them in the front because we wanted them to actually, like, experience the wedding and not, you know, not just be standing up there with us and not knowing what to do. We wanted them to see it, like, firsthand. So we had them sitting up there, and then the officiant called them up there, and we all sat, like, in a circle, stood in a circle, held hands, and, you know, it kind of went into, like, the details and stuff like that, and it was dope. Um, and, uh, I won't, I, I probably won't share that piece with the public just cause, you know, our kids are involved in that piece. Right. But, um, we wanted to just like kind of give you guys a description of that. You know, it was dope. You know, we were up there, me and her, they called them up there and, uh, you know, they kind of all said their little 
I wills and I do's, yeah. you know what I mean? So that was pretty tight. Um, and I hope that that sits with them too, like for their future, for whatever they decide to do in their future, if they ever decide to get married, if they ever decide to settle down or anything like that, I feel like, you know, they have a the good example now. Mm-hmm. Instead of like, at least for me, I didn't have that. I didn't have the, yeah, I see my mom get married when I was younger, so I know how this go. You feel me? Yeah. Um. So I, I hope we set a good example for them. Uh, I hope we set a good example for family and friends, people that may be in relationships and not know what's the next step. Um, you know, because there's a lot of, like, false hope now, right? I think that's, like, one of the the things that I had got from when people were talking to me about the wedding in general. A lot of people were telling me, like, you don't see this too often. Right. Like, I, I don't recall when was the last time we went to a wedding. You know, so it was dope. It was dope to be that in such a rare time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because... Uh, yeah, it's real. You know what I mean? It's definitely real. You know, you get to a point where you want to, like, stop wasting time. And I think we even talked about this before. You, like, go through this, like, time in your life where you, like, spend so much time dating and looking for that partner. Yeah. You know, and you can go years, right? Some people in their 50s and still dating. Or some still people looking. miss out on their special person because they feel like they still want to be in the streets. Or or that too, or that too. So you might you, you some people are checking in too late. Some people still gotta keep checking, you know. So I think like when you come across that situation, when you find yourself a solid partner, when you find yourself your other half, and you realize like, okay, I got this now. Now I can secure this. Now we can do this, and now we can go on to the next. Like what's next in life, right? Because it's all like this whole life cycle. It it, it kind of comes in an order. You know what I mean? You get some money, you know, you get some credit, you get a house, you get some cars, you know, whatever order you're getting it in, mm-hmm. I feel like it's all part of the whole process of growing up, you know? So I think that it's really rare. And we're just at the point, like we mentioned, you know, I'm at the point right now where I just, I'm back to where I just want my motherfucking um, last name to to mean something to these people. Right. Just like when you uh, hear about, like, these famous you know, white families or Jewish families. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's building um, that family name. Yeah. I mean, you hear about, like, these families in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. And you know them by their last name. Like, that's tight. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's a fucking family tree. You feel, you're building a whole foundation. So, I think that that's tight. I, it, you know, I definitely recall them back to the wedding. It was lit. It was definitely lit. Um, and, you know, we had a lot of partners that was getting fucked up. Yeah. I know was I was lit. fucked up. I, then I... I ripped my tux, so oh, yeah. <laughs> so my yeah, pants one like one of my uh, uh, um, sides of my pants ripped all the way completely, like literally, like I don't know. I, matter of fact, I think about it. I gotta talk to whoever tailored that. That me fucked up because he was turned. Hey, I was turned. Somebody was like, "Your pants ripped." And I looked down, bro. My whole leg was showing. Boxers and all. I had the I had the I had the kickies boxers on too. Shout out, <laughs> I remember. Shout out kickies. You know what I mean? I had the kickies boxers on and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? My leg, white piece of my leg, all showing and shit. The part that gets no sun. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that shit was hella funny. I'm yeah. walking around the rest of the night, and I had nothing. That that's what I was uh uh I, I was kind of lost of because I came there with shorts. So I wanted to switch into something, and I couldn't. Like, I had no, I, somebody had took my shit. I don't know what's happening. And yeah. everybody was just too drunk. The party was way too big for even. To I had a backup somebody. dress that I ended up changing into later. Yeah, see, not me. But I wore my wedding dress for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I really did. loved my wedding dress. So yeah. I wanted to wear it for as long as possible until to, I couldn't You know, no I tried to get you to show me that how long. Definitely hella long, for sure. Was it worth the wait? It was definitely worth the wait. And then, you know, when I saw the dress, it was definitely you. <laughs> like, yeah. It is some shit, you feel me, that you would wear. That's crazy. And then the veil and all that shit. It was tight, man. And I debated on doing a veil, too. And at the end, I'm like, nah, I want a veil. I want to do think the whole that, shebang. Yeah, I think you went, you went crazy with it. It was definitely crazy with it. So, I mean, shit. You know, the wedding was tight. You know, uh, and shout out to our officiant, Mama T. Um, man, she made that go so smoothly, beautifully. And yes, yeah, shout out to her. She actually flew in from Italy. 
Yes. Uh, just to marry us. So that was actually like a big blessing too. Um, you know, just to have somebody willing to do that. I thought that was solid as fuck. You know, and just, uh, you know, the whole three generations over there at, you know, the estate. You know, I think that, you know, they did a great job of making sure that we felt stress free. Because, yes. you know, that the reason we even mentioned the whole like wedding thing was because for the last few months, probably the last six months, that's been like the biggest thing in the, in the book. And, you know, for the last like two, three months, it was coming fast. You know? Oh, it was coming really fast. Uh, we kept having to redo the guest list. Um, there was a few people that couldn't make it. So then we had to, you know, move some things around. It got it got stressful. It got stressful for sure. It got stressful. Pinches, moscas and shit. My mom would have been out here with that. I know. Smacking shit. I'm thinking like maybe, maybe not do this outside next time. No, I'm completely okay with it. Oh, um, they annoy me. Yeah, okay. About the box one. But you want, but you want a ranch. I do. How does that even make sense? Well, like, because I'll probably have my nice little setup that'll like keep the flies away. Yeah, you just gotta. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah, we we gotta go to a rancho, <laughs> you know, soon just so you can see what it is. Some stuff is just like a luxury. You know what I mean? Not having flies around and mosquitoes, that's a luxury when you're living in the farm. Well, I think for me it's just like when they're like crawling on me, you know, you get all like, like I'm sure you guys can see I'm over here like smacking them away. I'm hella fidgety. But I just don't like them. I don't like that feeling. But, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it was tight, though. It was tight, you know, but we're glad to be back. Yes. We're glad to be back. We're definitely glad to be back just because like a lot of thing has been a lot of things have been happening, you know, and uh, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, we wanna we wanna uh talk about a few things, right? Um one of them is actually being uh your accessories that you recently released. Yes. Um, you know, like I said, we've been all over the place, so mm -hmm. we have not been on top of our shit like we should be, but we're back. So if you if you can, if you could pull that out for me. So um, I did come out with, as you guys know, I'm like building this character. So this is an air freshener. Um, it's black ice. That's the scent. It is. Um, this is my character, Demonia. And some of you may know I've been working on her for a while just trying to build her up, get you guys familiar. I will be putting out her backstory pretty soon. Um, just so you know where she comes from. What does she represent? Um, I'm really excited about it. And this is a air freshness uh, black ice, right? Yes. Yeah, it's the best one, too. So, yes, yeah, it's the, you know, as y'all can see right there. And it is unisex. Um, guys can hang it up in their car. Girls can hang it up in their car. And for the people that are actually listening and not even watching this, um, if you're listening to it, man, go to buymrstraphours.com and uh, check it out. You know, you'll be able to see it's pop sockets. Um, there was some sweaters recently released of it. You know, with some air fresheners. You know, get some for the whip. They're tight as fuck. Um, Ooh, I can smell it. it. Smells good. Just hanging right there like old school Cadillac, huh? <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, also, too, before we, well, well, how much time we got on that right there? All right, for sure. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right, so, like, you know, that's another thing that we also kind of said, right, was just, like, are we going to have a conversation how much, how long ever it takes, you know what I mean? Yeah. If it's going to be a short convo, cool. If it's going to be a long one, cool. Um, but, you know, we also want to, oh, we do want to give, I do want to give a big shout-out to um, uh, Out of Boy Bullies. Um, you know, they're actually one of this week's sponsors on our show. I just wanted to give you guys like a quick little breakdown for anybody out there who's ever, you know, looking for like any type of official, you know, breeze and things like that. You know, the dog game is, is crazy. A lot of like uh, fake breeds going around, you know, uh, you know, they'll tell you they got this, but they got this, you know. So for one, I just want to give a big shout out to Attaboy Bullies, man. I'll go ahead and put their information here on the screen so you guys can check them out. Are these the uh, dogs that we've seen recently? Um, no, nah, this isn't the dogs that uh, we seen recently. I'm still waiting to see these dogs in person, you know. Uh, I think we've seen them in person at a dog show, if I'm not mistaken. But they got a big variety, um, you know, they have... 
you know, obviously every so often, you know, dogs, different dogs come into the right. picture. Um, but I just fuck with they work and I, I fuck with how they look. You know, the dogs look good. They look healthy. You know, you That's know how a it big is. Thing. You know how it is in the dog world, man. I won't even get too much into that. But, you know, yeah. I'm going to put the information on here. Shout out Attaboy Bullies. Man, uh, make sure y'all tap in. Hit them with a follow. Um, but back to where we were at with it was, um, you know, I think that, you know, I think that uh, we're going to be coming back with these, like, podcast episodes. And like we talked about, it's like maybe just, like, start winging it how we wing it. Uh, we're going to start to, you know, we're going to keep the Wednesdays. We're mm-hmm. going to try to add another day of some sort because I know a lot of people – are still like, man, that ain't enough, it ain't enough. Maybe I think, certain subjects we can split up. Yeah, I was days. thinking more like we're going to do one episode on Wednesdays for YouTube, and then the rest of the episodes you might want to go to, like, our audio. You know, go to okay. you know, go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, things like that. You know what I mean? So, But anyways, you know, we're going to wing it different times. You know, uh, you might see your, see different subjects. Just mm-hmm. like this one was an internal one. It was a quick update of where we've been. We've been working. You know, we've been dealing with the family. Um, right. And now we're trying to balance this out for y'all. So, you know, I think that the whole, like, um, trying to be, like, very, very perfect is what kind of, like, delays us. Because, obviously, yeah. when we do that, we get big teams involved. You know, we're working around people's schedules. They're working around ours. So, when we do it more just internally, it is what it is, right? I mean, right. you know, we talk about what we talk about, where we've Some been Some days at. my hair might be done, and other days it might not. What was what was that all about? Were you trying to say something? No. Oh, oh. I was just saying, like, just... You know, we're going to be pushing out the, like, not perfect. Sometimes I don't look all the way right, but I'm going to still make sure that the podcast gets done. I thought you were talking about, like, yourself right now, because I'm like, really? You look good. No, not right now. No, that's cool. Yeah, I feel you, though. I'm the same way. Fuck, I probably ain't even shaved and shit, but, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that that's the whole point of this podcast. I mean, we're here to say what you guys want, Mm -hmm. right? So, at the end of the day, you know, uh, we ain't worried about the appearance. I ain't worried about the appearance, you know, uh, but we are going to start including, we want to start talking about the the subjects that the people want to hear. So okay. we definitely are going to create a platform for you guys to be able to email us or message us. However, we're going to do it. We're still figuring that out, you know, um, but just for you guys to actually, you know, hit us up with the questions, subjects that may you may want to talk about, um, you know, oh, shit, I'm trying to think about who used to do that shit. You could just kind of like a radio show, right? What were they like? Call in. Call in with a problem. You know what I mean? They got a. They got a problem. Good one. They got a problem. Like, look, man. Let us know in the comments if you would like for us to have like a call line for you to call while we're filming. Yeah, some some crazy shit. Like, look, man. I got. I got my wife, but I got my side chick that I really love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, say shit like that. That niggas might like. Look, this my advice. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But. I'm just trying to add more like an interactive thing. You know, I know you guys like reaching out to us. You guys like talking to us. We love talking to y'all. Um, but once again, man, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, was there anything you wanted to add before we left? Um, not that I can think of on the moment. I'm over here getting attacked by flies. Yeah, yeah. You, you see me? I'm over here Brad like called, swiping Brad left, called, swiping right. Brad like called backup. <laughs> Nigga was talking shit about them on the podcast. That nigga talk, called backup came through. I know. That's hella funny. But yeah, all right. So to sew that up, man, we're back. This is Saying What You Want podcast. Please drop a comment. Please subscribe. Please follow us on Instagram. Let us know the subjects that you guys want us to touch on. Let us know if you got a question that you might mm-hmm. want us to express on here. Like I said, we got no filter. This is the Saying What You Want podcast. So reach out to us. If you got a thought that you won't say, we will. So reach out. Saying What You Want podcast. I'm Baby Gas. And I'm Mrs. Trap Hours. And this is what it is. Let's get it.